Hey, hey, hey. Time for another Out of This World story from Our Space. It hurts so much worse when they end up in a relationship with their affair partner. This will be long, but at least it's entertaining. I just need some support. I'm freaking heartbroken. My girlfriend and I had been together for over four years and we're living together for two. About eight months ago, she started a job at a factory. She's very young, very, very pretty blonde girl, so I was wary, but I trusted her. Immediately, she gained a close friend. We'll call him Sean. She said Sean was a great guy and kept the creeps away from her at work. Fast forward a few months and I see her and Sean are liking every single post to other posts on every social media platform. I ask my significant other if she has been talking to him outside of work. She says no and I ask if she'd prove it by showing me her Snapchat. Not the kind of person I am, but I knew something was up. She refuses and admits she's been Snapchatting him. I keep my cool, but things only get worse with how close they were. Eventually, I message him, very politely, and ask him if there's anything going on and tell him I'm uncomfortable with the level of their friendship. He responds back like the nicest guy I've ever heard. I'm harmless. We're just good friends. You don't need to worry about me. We'll only ever be friends. I felt better. Fast forward again a month or so later, and she starts going for drives at like 1am, like 4 hour drives. Now we shared our location, so I knew she didn't go anywhere to meet him, but it's still suspicious as hell. Things like this keep happening and eventually I confront her. I think you're cheating on me with Sam. She's flabbergasted. I would never do that. I'd break up with you before I cheated on you. He's just very nice. I believed her. About three weeks ago, I come to bed. She's asleep and her phone lights up. I peek down at it and it's a text from him. His name. She didn't even change it to hide they were texting. The text says, Good night, baby. Sweet dreams. I love you. I immediately wake her up and confront her and she's suddenly a mute. Won't say a word. I kicked her out of the house because it's mine and she leaves. She was afraid to go to her parents so she just stayed in her Jeep all night. I tell my very close friends what happened and it just so happens the guy lives right around the corner from him. At about 9 a.m. that morning, my friend peeks around the corner and there's her car in Sean's driveway. She had been texting and calling me all night begging me to hear her out and patch things up. After about a week of begging me and begging me and me saying no, I finally cave. I tell her we will talk when she gets off work. Remember, they're co-workers, and she's very happy about it. I get off around midnight and decide to drive past her work since it's only about 90 seconds from my house. There's her car, parked right next to his, in the back of the parking lot, with no one around. She's been talking to him still the whole time. I lose it. I go home and start threatening to kill myself. She called the police and I was admitted into the hospital for three days. I get out of the hospital and get my phone back. I wasn't allowed to have it in there. She's blown me up with paragraphs about how I'm her soulmate and she's so sorry and she'll be here waiting for me when I'm ready. At this point, I'm beaten, deprived of all joy. I continue to talk to her and she tells me she hates him because of what's happened to us and she hasn't talked to him since that night. Stupidly, I meet up with her a few nights later and we talk in my truck. I tell her she's in a safe space and can tell me the truth about anything and I won't be mad or tell her I'm done with her. At the end of the conversation, I ask her to prove she hasn't talked to him and show me her texts. I watch her delete their conversation in the reflection of my window before she shows me her phone. She must have argued with me for 10 minutes saying she didn't delete anything before she admitted it. I lose it again. How, after everything you've said to me, can you still lie and talk to him? You must be in love with him. She says she's not and that hadn't been texting in that sort of context. Over the last few days, people have reached out to me with stories about her and Sean, all things I didn't know about. Hickeys, her being at his house, etc. I spoke to her briefly earlier tonight and told her I forgive her. I do. I don't plan on getting back together with her. She randomly stops messaging me back. I get a text from the friend who lives by Sean and he says that she is parked in his driveway. This was about six hours ago and she's still there at his house. I'm freaking broken. I love this girl with every fiber of my being. We had a life planned. I had my late grandmother's necklace made into a ring to propose to her and she knew. We were looking at houses to buy. We had 12 animals together. We were perfect for each other. She was my best friend, my everything. I don't think I'll ever love someone like that again. I loved her with everything. And I end up coming home to an empty house and cry in the shower while she lays in bed in his arms. That's my freaking girlfriend, not his. This is so freaking hard. Thank you if you read all of this. I just needed to type it all out. Edit. Thank you all for your kind words. We had another talk where basically all she did was take up for him and talk about how he's actually a really good and gentle guy. Nothing about wanting me more or anything, so I get it now. I've blocked her on everything and I'm getting my number changed. 
She asked if in a year or so she could reach out and I told her I may be in a new relationship then and I'm a loyal boyfriend so I wouldn't respond. Let's get some reactions. Groundbreaking Win69 starts us off. You are lucky. She is sick people who just gaslighting you either time. Focus on yourself. Hit the gym hard. You will find a better girl. Her relationship will not last longer. It will end up in chaos sooner or later. Mr. Big Bull 01 chimes in. Hi OP. Sorry this all happens to you, but I do have a question. You are so hung up on her texts. If she texted him or not, how about her car constantly parked at his house? Did you ever mention that to her? If so, what is her response to that? Anyway, bottom line is, she lied and betrayed you. That is all you need to know. Just block her on everything. Really go no contact. That way you will heal in the quickest way. Every time she tries to contact you, then just ignore her. If she meets up with you somehow, like showing up at your house, then just walk past her. Do not acknowledge her existence. If she says anything, just ignore what she is saying. Just one last thing. Let everyone know why you broke up. Tell her family, your family, and all friends she cheated on you with Sean. Do not let her tell why you broke up because you can be sure that you'll be the bad guy. Take care, Mr. Big Bull. Our next reaction from Terrible Ad 7934. You are dodging a big bullet, bro. Be thankful it happened now and not in 10 more years with kids, house, car, etc. It is not nice to get divorced. The best thing you can do is stop contacting her and concentrate on yourself. I know it's hard, but you have to do it. You can also consider the option of moving out. It is horrible for your mind to think if your ex-girlfriend is in Sean's house, which to make it worse, lives just around the corner. Consider that option, bro. It can be a great opportunity to heal. And if you need therapy, don't hesitate to ask for help. Don't be ashamed if you need it. Best of luck, brother. Remember, you are dodging a huge bullet. Our next reaction from KBSB0830. Honey, I'm going to talk to you from the place of love. I have been exactly where you are. My husband did the same to me, except it was the babysitter. Let me tell you, their relationship lasted about a year. Relationships that start with the foundation of one of them cheating to be together, they don't last. They don't ever last. It's a bad way to start a relationship. This girl, you may have been perfect together once, but you are not now. Do you really want a lifetime of dealing with this? Because I can promise you, she won't ever stop. That's how people are. And I can also promise you, you will make it through this. And despite what you think, there will be someone you love even more, who will do good by you. Oh, that guy I was married to? Been in several relationships, got married again, and divorced. Hasn't changed. Still very much a cheater. I have been married to my new hubby for 9 years, together with him for 13. I absolutely promise you there are better and brighter days ahead. It's not going to be easy, for a while, but it will get better. Also, try to work on loving yourself more. You deserve better for yourself and you deserve to be happy. I promise, you have happy days still coming. Hugs to you. If you need a friend, you can always message me on here. I'd be happy to help, in any way I can. One more thought from Cranach. You need distance from her as soon as possible. I know that it is hard, that you still love her and can't accept that she left you, but she did, and each time, when you see her, or hear from her about her, it will only hurt you further. Block her in every way possible and tell your friends to please no longer inform you about what she does. Spend time with friends and family. Talk to them and ask them for support. Get rid of all her stuff at your place and start to leave her behind. She made her decision and stick to it until now. I am very sorry that you are in this position. Please take good care of yourself. Please also get tested for STDs. Better safe than sorry. On to the next story. Broken, shattered, and lost. My fiance and I have been together for nine years. We have five children and have experienced a lot of hardships and happiness in our time together. Before we met, she was in a relationship for 9 years, starting when she was 13 with her being married for the last 3 years. They had 2 kids together. I have always considered myself to be their father, and we have 3 kids together. We have had our ups and downs, but I thought that everything was okay in our relationship. I am a very insecure person because every relationship I was in before this, not that they were nearly on the same level, I was cheated on by my partner at the time. With my fiancé having been cheated on as well, and all the years of love and trust we had built, I never thought I would be in this situation. Recently, she contracted COVID and was quarantining away from me and the kids in the basement. I would try to visit with her by talking to her on the stairs and checked in on her as often as I could to make sure she was doing okay. I never once suspected she might be messaging people behind my back. After she got off of quarantine, she said she wasn't doing very good mentally, and then she dropped the bomb that she wanted to take a break from our relationship so she could focus on herself. I argued that we were a couple and a team and that part of what I consider to be my job is to help build her up. I agreed to give her the time and space she needed to work on herself and let her know that I was there for her. This broke me. 
nine years together now, and what did I do to cause this? Why won't she let me help her? We have kids together. How can you not take them into account? A few days after this, she went out drinking with some friends and I saw some messages she was exchanging with several different people and them talking like they were in high school, saying superficial things like they loved each other and some sexual talk. I confronted her about this and we had a big fight for the most of the night. I asked for the password to her phone because I needed to know what was going on. She argued that we weren't together during this time even though I could see the messages started before she had taken a break. The next morning when everything settled, we talked and she said she wanted to be with me and that all of this would stop. This was a few days before Valentine's Day and I had did everything I could this time to make her feel special and appreciated. I always do tell her she's beautiful. I constantly tell her that I love her. On Valentine's Day when she got off work, I had prepared a bath for her and made her a special homemade dinner and homemade dessert. Everything was good, I thought. She was in a dark place and that led her to do something that was completely unlike the woman I had known and loved for nine years now. After she fell asleep, that evening I got curious and checked her phone and found messages that I hadn't seen before with someone she was messaging before I found out and continued to message after I found out. Messages stating that he was her favorite person and that she loved him. Sexual messages of her saying things that she had never said to me. She's always been uncomfortable with her body and her sexuality, no matter how many times I tell her I love her body. Saying things like she would suck his soul from him. She even went so far as to buy a vibrator that could be controlled from the internet for them to use together. She had given this to me for Valentine's Day under the guise that she had bought it for her, and I even thought she had never once been interested in anything like that before. She lied to me. After saying all this BS would stop and after breaking my heart into pieces, she lied to me. We argued again that evening and much of the next day, and she said she needed closure with the other guy, who she had met on an online video game and lives thousands of miles away. I demand answers. How could you do this to me, to our family? Did the nine years we spent together mean nothing? She had been cheated on by her ex. How could you make someone else feel that pain, that worthlessness? Did I not cross her mind ever when she was doing these things? How could she need closure from someone else? Someone she had only known for a few weeks. I gave her an ultimatum at that point. She could get closure from him or she could get closure from me, but that I deserved better than to be someone's second choice and that I deserved better than the treatment she was giving me currently. She again said she wanted to be with me and blocked him on all of her social media accounts. I asked her why she did this and how it all started. And she said she has been struggling for some time and that one night she tried to kill herself by taking a bunch of pills and that when she came to, she was numb. Then she started these online emotional relationships with people who she had never met because they couldn't pass judgment and wouldn't have expectations of her. All of 2020 and most of 2021, I had my own mental health struggles. We had a baby at the beginning of February, 2021 and her arrival changed everything for me. I knew I had to get better for her and for the rest of her family. I was in the dark for a very long time, but the whole time I was in the dark, I never once thought about doing anything like she did. Never once thought about tearing our family apart. I only thought about how I could get out of that place so I could be better for them. She knows that type of person I am. She knows what I believe. That when you're together with someone, that person is your only person. And then you trust that person with your heart, mind, body, and soul. For me, that trust has been shattered. I feel worthless. I question why it is that people always do this to me. If it was just a one-time thing, I would understand it. But everyone? Literally every single person. What is so bad about me? I try my best to be a good person. I try my best to be a good husband and father. I still love her with all my heart. I still love her as much as the first day we met. She says she can't give me all the answers I have asked because she's not well herself yet though. She says she doesn't know why she did this. Several times I have tried to bring this up, and she has said she is going to kill herself. I feel like that threat is being used as a weapon against me, and I don't want her to hurt any more mentally than she already is, but at the same time, she's the one that did this to us, and she's the one that should have to answer for her actions. It's not fair that I don't get answers. It's not fair that I have to worry anytime she plays games with anyone now. It's not fair that when we go out, I wonder if there's anyone else she sees that she thinks is cute. It's not fair that my feelings don't or didn't matter. She said she wasn't thinking of me when she did this. How could you not? How could I not even cross your mind once? My thoughts are all over the place and it isn't fair. My whole world flipped upside down and I'm trying the best to stay strong and be there for her needs while trying to get the answers I need and taking care of our kids and myself. Yesterday, she was playing a game with someone and I asked her straight up if that was one of the people she had messaged before and she told me it was not. I could tell that something was off when she told me though, so when she stepped away, I checked the messages on her console and found out it was one of the people she was messaging. 
I confronted her and she said it wasn't a big deal because she was just playing a game with him and that was it. That the message they exchanged didn't mean anything. That's not the point though. The point is she told me she blocked everyone that she had messaged. The point is she lied to me. Yet again, this is not the person I fell in love with. The person I fell in love with would never do this to me. They would never make me feel this low. They would never continually lie to me. I want more than anything for us to move past this, but she doesn't think I will ever let this go. I think I can, but what if she's right? What if I can never trust her again? At this point, she's not done herself any favors to earn my trust back. I have always considered her my soulmate. What if I'm wrong? Our reactions start with Vivid Masterpiece 29. She's continuously lying to you because she knows you'll forgive her. She's literally dangling you on the end of a string promising to correct her past mistakes and remain loyal. Then, just as you think you can begin to trust her again, boom. You realize she was lying to you again. She sees you as her safety choice, the fallback guy, because you're always available, and her affair partner isn't. Ask yourself, OP, why would she keep talking to the person that has nearly destroyed your relationship? She doesn't care about you, I'm sorry to say. I guarantee that if her affair partner lived in your area, the relationship would have turned physical by now. Distance is the only thing preventing it. She cheated on you, and if she has the chance to do it again, she will. Our next reaction comes from Fragrant Spray. Just so you know, she's going to continue doing this, either with this guy or someone else. She doesn't respect you. You're the safety net. You have shown her that she can do this and you won't leave, so she'll keep doing it. What she learned from this is to hide it better. That's it. Our next response from Shigataganai13. Okay, take a minute to just breathe. Seriously, for one whole minute, just breathe deep and clear your mind. Some of this you're not going to want to hear, which is what makes it important for you to think about. Part 1. What the F is a soulmate? Do you live in a Disney movie? This fantasy you have in your head about all these expectations of her are childish BS. She is not a princess needing to be rescued. You are not the chosen one, and neither is she. You are just two separate individuals that shared a decade of experiences, two distinct adults that had love and sex and children, two distinct individual animals of the homo sapien variety. Get that fantasy crap out of your head because it's not serving you and it's in fact betraying you. Until you get rid of fantasy land and live in the real world, there's absolutely no chance for your relationship to work out. Part 2. Fantasy gone? Okay, good. She effed up. She lost her way and was stuck in limerence. That butterflies in the stomach feeling about the fantasy of a new relationship. What did she do? How many times? Which genitals went where? It doesn't matter. Get this through your head. You'll never know the whole truth. It doesn't matter what she says because that's just a simple fact. Once she lied, truth was taken off the table. Your past relationship is over. Part 3. You need to take some time away from her and decide what it is that you want. You need to think about how you'll never know the truth. Your past relationship is gone. The woman you thought you knew has been irrevocably changed from that fantasy to a living, breathing person you don't necessarily know anymore. Once you know what you want, set some boundaries for her. If you want to reconcile, these boundaries are not negotiable and one simple pinky toe over the line and it's divorce time. You cannot backtrack. If she crosses the line, it's over. This is why you're going to meet with an attorney and discuss what divorce looks like. Let her know that you've talked with one and if she crosses your boundaries, it's over 100%. Part 4. Get Therapy. Good luck. <laughs>